everyone can hear. Um, we are going to be um, sharing a recording of this session on our YouTube channel later today. So if you want to come back and reference it or you want to share it with other people, please um, check that out. And then if you did register through Eventbrite, you will also get a copy of all of the slides from today. Um, so be on the lookout for that as well. So um, welcome everyone. Thank you for coming to another Tuesdays at Two with Haven. Today we're going to be talking about creating a calm bedroom and using different design styles and tips and tricks to do that. So we're going to be talking about um, some general tips for creating a calm bedroom. Um, we're also going to be talking about how to maintain a sense of peace to your bedroom. Um, that's more of a lifestyle portion of it. And we're also going to be looking at various design styles and how you can achieve calm spaces um, utilizing each of those things. So um, first we're going to go through just the general tips for what makes a space feel calm and these really can be translated to any room of the house and even though we're going to be focusing on bedrooms you can certainly do a lot of these things in living spaces, kitchens, bathrooms, wherever you want to kind of achieve that tranquil sense of space. Um, so we're going to be talking about using color and using lighting. Um, those are kind of the big things that automatically change the space and change the vibe of a room. And then we're also going to think about the details and the stuff that kind of helps bring that whole um, design together. So first we're going to talk about color. Color is the easiest way to change the whole vibe in a room. There are lots of studies that link um, color to psychology and emotion. So you've maybe heard about companies who really focus on researching the psychology of color um, because there is a lot of correlation between colors and things that we feel when we look at these colors or even things that we want to do when we look at these colors. So for example, red is a really intense and energizing color, but it also actually can physically make you hungry. So a lot of fast food companies use red in their logo to get you to be hungry and then purchase their food. Um, so when it comes to designing a room, you can think about these things as well when you're choosing like a paint color or wallpaper or anything like that. Um, so these are just some common color associations. So red is often associated with excitement, passion, energy, a lot of intensity. Orange is similar, but it also has more of a happiness to it, um, but it's definitely a stimulating color. And yellow is definitely a warm color. We think of the sun, we think of laughter, we think of like emojis, um, lots of smiley face things are all yellow. And as you can see, red, orange, and yellow all have kind of similar color associations with them because they're all warm colors. When you get to cool colors, you also have some similarities um, in kind of what they make you feel, what they make you think of. So green often is associated with being healthy, um, feeling calm, using being harmonious, kind of in touch with nature. Blue is along similar lines. It's a very focused color. It's a very wise color. People who um, use blue a lot uh, tend to be taken very seriously or, you know, people just kind of automatically assume they know what they're talking about. Um, Purple is a very sophisticated color, it kind of induces respect, royalty, things like that. And then neutrals also have color associations to them. So black is a very powerful color, it's pretty elegant, it's mysterious. Gray is more subtle um, and it kind of is a sense of balance. Um, it can be associated with like gloominess as well, but it kind of just depends on um, the type of gray. And white is um, fresh, clean, bright, uh, lots of associations with just being fresh and vibrant. And so notice that, you know, uh, green and blue are the ones that are most commonly associated with things that are calm or serene. Um, so there are easy choices when you're trying to pick a paint color for a room that you want to feel calmer in general, um, even if you really like the color yellow, maybe that's your favorite color, having yellow walls might subconsciously sort of trigger more of an energized feeling in a room and maybe even affect your sleep without you even really realizing it. Um, that being said, you can really use any color in a bedroom and still make it feel calm. It's just kind of how you use it. So maybe if you just really, really love yellow, 
you can pair pops of yellow with some more calm pale blue walls um, or white. Uh, you can use colors really easily without overwhelming yourself. And also keep in mind that all colors have both positive and negative associations with them. Um, these are not like the end all be all associations with color, they're just the most general ones. So maybe for some reason you really specifically just are turned off by the color purple. It does not make you feel peaceful and royal. It's like you know you, so keep that in mind as well when you're choosing colors. If you're gonna use whites or neutrals in a bedroom, choosing one that has bluer undertones to it is what's going to read as cooler and therefore a little bit calmer in space. So if you can notice here, there's two whites next to each other and um, the one on the left has more of green and blue undertones to it, so it reads cooler in the image, whereas the one on the right has more yellow and pink undertones, so it just reads a little more warmer, more of an ivory, off-white off sort of color. The same thing happens in gray. Um, so the left gray, Stonington gray, has more blue in it and therefore is a cooler gray, reads a little more calm. And the one on the right has a little more yellow and brownish undertones, so it just reads a little bit warmer. You can also choose a warm version of a cool color. So even though green is mostly associated as being a cool color, um, it definitely can be warmer. Because if you think about when you learned how to mix paint colors in primary school, blue and yellow together are what make green. Yellow is a warm color, blue is a cool color. And so really, when you're picking a green, if you just have a higher percentage of yellow in it, like the pale avocado color on the right, it's going to read warmer and therefore not quite as calming, whereas the color on the left has a lot more blue base in it and therefore reads cooler and a little bit calmer. You can also definitely use dark colors when you're using, when you're trying to create a calm bedroom. Um, just because something is calm and tranquil doesn't mean it has to be super pale blue or white. Um, but you definitely want to keep it in whatever color family is reading calmer overall. So dark greens, dark blues, even if you use black, um, all blacks are still made with pigments of color. So they're still going to have undertones to them, just like a white has an undertone or a gray has an undertone. Ultimately, paint is the first thing that affects your mood when you enter a room, even if you don't really realize that it's doing so. So starting here really helps set the tone for the space and will help kind of make all your, the rest of your decisions for creating a calm bedroom. So we're going to talk about lighting next because lighting is the next biggest thing that definitely changes the mood of a room. Even if you just think about um, the kind of lighting in different places that you go to, if you're you know, going to Target or the doctor's office, you have big fluorescent lightings. Those aren't really as cozy as, you know, your bedroom lighting might be. And it's a little tricky because um, there's a million different options of lighting and how you can use it today. So the biggest thing for lighting in a bedroom is that you want options. You want to be able to have recessed lighting, a pendant light, you want things on dimmers, you want bedside table lamps so that at any time of the day, you can use whatever light is working the best for you and making your space as calm as possible. Definitely avoid things like fluorescent lighting or even daylight bulbs. They're just a little too harsh and a little too cold. Um, so choosing bulbs that are soft white or warm white are gonna be better. And if you can put things on dimmers, that's ultimately the best. And I know it's kind of counterintuitive because we just talked about using cool colors in a calm bedroom and I'm saying avoid cool lights in a, in a calm bedroom. But if you think about it this way, um, you know, a warm light is what makes you feel cozy and want to like, call, like sit down with a book, whereas a bright fluorescent light is a little more stimulating and maybe even aggravating at times. So you want to kind of balance out your really cool walls with your warm lights. If you had really warm colored walls and then you added warm lights on top of them, you'd have a really richly saturated, super hot room um, visually. And so that is what's gonna be more stimulating and less calm. Okay, so in details, uh, we definitely wanna think about rugs. So if you already have carpet in your room, rug might not be um, as much of a thing that you need. However, you certainly can put rugs on top of carpet to kind of define spaces. 
But um, rugs are really good if you don't have carpeting because they ultimately add a really good amount of texture to a room and they help pull everything together. But it's also just really nice when you wake up in the morning to kind of sink your feet into something soft and cushy rather than step onto a cold floor. Um, and you don't need to have necessarily a rug that is huge and like fills the entire room. You can even just do some accent rugs along the side where you get out of bed. Um, and I even have one of those small sheepskin things like right off the side of my bed. It's really small, but it does the trick to add that little cozy feel and help me get out of bed in the morning. So other details that go into any room, um, but specifically for a bedroom, that really help the space feel calm. So the first one is scent, it's using candles, oil diffusers, or even just a spray. Um, scent can really calm us um, in ways that we don't really even realize. Uh, the key here is that you don't want anything that's too overwhelming, but it's going to be really personal to you because, you know, some people really love the scent of lavender, other people really don't like that and it doesn't make them feel calm. Or maybe you're more into nature and so pine scented candles, things like that, is going to be what really makes the space feel calm for you. That's something that you get to decide on. Fabric in your bedroom also makes a big impact. Um, again, it's personal preference, but if you want automatic, calm, serene, using linen is a really good option because it's casual and it's lightweight, so it's kind of flowy. If you use white bedding, you automatically get like an airy hotel sort of vibe. And if you're using curtains, you can go light and sheer to let a lot of light in or you could go dark and moody like velvet and kind of get enveloped in the space. That's also can be calming for people. So there's no really like one right way to do it. Don't skip artwork. Um, again, it's entirely personal, but artwork definitely helps make a space complete and make you feel calm in the process. The key here is just to stick with your color scheme. So, you know, it doesn't have to be super fancy, but keeping your color scheme uh, kind of helps to add to the tranquilness of your space. And then using greenery, of course, as well. If you've been to any of our other Tuesdays at Two so far, I feel like we've touched on greenery in every single content <laughs> that we've brought up. And the reason for that is because, one, it's, you know, a really trendy thing, I guess, like to have greenery in a space. But there is definitely a lot of research about how being surrounded by nature, even if it's just something that mimics nature, can be de-stressing, it can be um, calming, and it kind of like helps people even breathe easier if it's real plants. Um, if you're not using real plants, that's fine. Even just having a faux plant or even a picture of a plant can still trigger the same psychological reactions as like being out inside in nature. So greenery is kind of a powerful tool that I think people don't utilize quite enough. And then in terms of just accessories in general, the key in a calm bedroom is that you don't want to over it. So, you know, make sure that you are very intentionally placing things in the bedroom. Um, ask yourself, you know, is this decorative or do I need to use it? If it's usable, is it visually pleasing and therefore calming me? Or is it something that I need to store in a nightstand or a dresser? Um, and things like, you know, if you have a really beautiful collection of vases that you want to display and that are a nice blue color or something, but all you think about when you look at them is how much you want to clean them all the time, that's not really going to be something that helps you calm down yourself in your space. So maybe save those for another area of the house. <laughs> no matter what, um, it's important to self-reflect when you're designing a space that is relaxing for you because you're the one who knows yourself you know what things kind of trigger different emotions and therefore you're the one who gets to make the final call of what sorts of things are going in your space that will be calming for you okay so um you could do all of those things that we just discussed and you could still feel not very peaceful in your bedroom and that might be more how you're using the bedroom itself. So some tips for keeping the peacefulness in your room. Um, definitely keeping it clutter free. In general, clutter is what makes a lot of people stressed, but um, it is hard to do this all the time. Like not everybody has immaculate houses all day, every day, and that's fine. 
But even just like making a rule for yourself that you aren't going to eat in your bedroom or kids' toys don't belong in there or um, just keeping it free of stuff that's supposed to be in another area of the house can help you kind of keep track of the clutter. Um, and also make, definitely using covered storage. So utilizing your closet systems, utilizing your dressers to tuck things away so you don't see it as much um, can help keep it clutter free. And then again, along with accessories and clutter free, not having too much stuff out um, helps with that as well. And then of course, cleaning is also something that helps people feel less stressful. If you're in a clean space, you're not thinking about all the stuff you have to do, you're just, a little, um, you're just able to kind of sit there and enjoy it. So making sure that you are vacuuming and dusting regularly and washing your bed linens and things like that really will help overall to kind of keep the space feeling calm. And then the hardest one for me and probably for a lot of people is keeping it tech free. Um, I personally am not somebody who can keep it entirely tech free, but there are definitely some things that you can do to kind of limit the tech in your bedroom. So obviously we all know like the, the health risks of too much blue light before you go to sleep and then it affects how much you sleep at night or how well you sleep at night. Um, and kind of over time that can affect you both mentally and physically. So a couple of things that you can do if you have to keep your phone in your room is um, you can put your charger further away from you when you're in the bed. So um, whether you have it like across the room or it's just short enough that you can't charge the phone while in a comfortable position on your bed um, can help you get to a point where you have to like actively make a decision to look at your phone or put it away. Um, I found this really helpful for me because it can be like, I receive a notification, but I'm in bed already, I'm comfy, and I don't wanna get up, so I just wait for tomorrow because I'm already comfy, I don't wanna wake myself up in the process of going to go get my phone. You can also turn on features of your phone that are designed to help with this. Um, so a lot of smartphones have features, if you go in settings and you look for things like parental controls or bedtime routine, I think some of them call it you can set it so that um, the filter for the blue light will turn on at a certain time. So for example, my filter for my blue light turns on around 9.30 p.m. And then by 11.30, my phone is in complete black and white. So it kind of like helps me to not have so much blue light, but also kind of triggers me like to know what time it is and be like, oh, I should probably get ready for bed and I can get to bed on time. The best thing you can do is to just not have any tech in your bedroom. Um, but that is, again, really hard for people. Um, so just knowing you and knowing your own space, you kind of get to decide of that. Along the same lines, uh, TVs and bedrooms, you just generally, it's better to not if you are trying to have like a really calming space that you're just really focusing on being able to meditate in, sleep well in. Um, if you do have a TV in the bedroom, it's not like the end all of your tranquility, but maybe thinking about, uh, you know, certain hours of the day where you're not using it to aid in your own, like, peace of mind might be a good thing. Okay, so the last part of our discussion today is we're going to go through some of our different design styles and talk about what calm bedrooms look like for each of those. So we did do a different Tuesday at two where we went through design styles and kind of how to figure out which one was yours. Um, so just keep in mind that there is not necessarily one right way to do this. Um, these are just kind of ideas and some general traits. Okay, so a traditional bedroom, traditional design tends to have a lot of rounded furniture, carved wood, details like paneled ceilings, um, calming elements in here would be use of neutrals and then deep wood tones kind of to warm it up, but also using soft upholstery with tufted elements um, like the headboard on the end over there. And then uh, that sort of timeless feel of the furniture and the easy, simple colors are really what's gonna give it just a tranquil feeling right off the bat. Farmhouse or rustic style is pretty easy to make feel calm because it by nature is already that way. 
Um, a lot of people already associate farm style living as kind of being off the grid or feeling tranquil and in touch with nature. And so the style draws a lot from that. Um, so in the images here, you can see the calm atmosphere comes through most with whites and mixed with softer, paler greens and blues and earthy tones. Also keeping the fabric super soft and lightweight gives everything kind of a breezy feel and kind of brings that outside in. Industrial can read pretty cold and masculine. Um, so for some people that already in itself is calming and for some people it's not, it's more like harsh. But um, the key for this kind of space would just be to softening up all your super straight lines and metal with um, nice cushions and bedding and um, some airy curtains. So softening those edges. Bringing in greenery and artwork helps a lot here too because you can even, and you can even see in the dark bedroom on the right that the decor itself is still pretty cold, it's really dark, it's kind of like super neutral, but the softness of the bed still kind of gives that cozy vibe. Scandinavian is another one that is pretty focused on being calm already. Uh, it's a lot of neutral, simple design, nothing too over the top. And it's all about texture here. So keeping the key principles of Scandinavian design in your mind as you choose bedroom selections here are really all you need and you're good to go. So just keeping simple, unfinished things, um, lots of whites, lots of neutrals, nothing too over the top. So bohemian and eclectic are two design styles that can get super maximalist um, really quickly, so which is great. We love that about these design styles. Um, but when we're talking about a calm bedroom that doesn't have a lot of extra stuff in it, it's kind of hard to maybe tone that down for these kind of spaces. So uh, for a calmer bedroom, you can still bring like some of these elements in that really make Bohemian and Eclectic what they are, but just make them smaller elements. So keeping the walls neutral, pale, or muted gives you a good backdrop for having a couple items that really pop with color um, without overwhelming the space. And greenery is going to be your hero in here because it's definitely part of the bohemian and eclectic um, design style, but it also is a calming presence in any room. So glam. Glam usually has a lot of elements of shiny, um, whether it's using brass, chrome, or crystal. The bling can, is what really could be too distracting if there's too much of it in a room. Um, so using those elements of glam in a more subtle way or in smaller amounts is really gonna be helpful here to create in the calm space. This style is great for trying out deep colors on the walls, um, like using black or dark green. And along with bracing, embracing like really luxe textures like velvet and darker and heavier fabrics. Um, so the, the key here is really just keeping your color palette minimal um, and maintaining the serenity with just only a subtle nod to the glitz of the glam. Mid-century modern was known not only for its clean lines and wood, but also for a lot of super warm colors, like yellows, greens, and pinks. So in a bedroom, it's important to kind of balance those things out with cooler toned fabrics or wall colors. Um, this style is really easy to blend with other styles though. So have fun with using moody glam colors or more bohemian accents to kind of um, make it your own, but still feel calm. So coastal, kind of similar to Scandinavian um, or farmhouse, is a lot about bringing the outside in, keeping things really calm and soothing on their own. Um, coastal's goal is definitely to achieve the serenity of being at the beach or being at the waterfront, um, using a lot of white, a lot of blue, a lot of light colored wood. So it's pretty easy to keep it um, calm just by using those design principles. The thing here is just, again, to avoid having too much stuff, too much coastal decor can get a little more cluttered and feel a little kitschy rather than relaxed and beachy. And then finally, we have modern and transitional. So modern and transitional are two different styles, 
but they do get blended together a lot because modern on its own can be sort of cold and just all black and white. Transitional sort of takes elements of modern, but combines them in like an easy to love sort of way. Like a lot of people really like transitional design, which is why it's what Hayden uses a lot when we stage as well. Um, the way to keep spaces like this feeling peaceful is not using too much of the same thing. So for example, don't use all wood everything or all metal everything. And um, to keep your color palette minimal to neutrals and one or two accent colors. Um, I love the green bed frame in this far right image, but it's not overwhelming because of all the white walls and the textured rug around it. So it keeps it peaceful. And then the other thing is because modern doesn't have a lot of color, it is a good place to add something that's a little warmer to it. So like a warm colored pillow or a warmer rug, just to keep it a little more um, cozy and a little less sterile. So as you can see, there are definitely several right ways to make your bedroom feel like a little sanctuary for yourself and be really calm and relaxing. And ultimately, you're the boss of what kinds of things achieve that for you. If you need a starting point of like, I don't even know where to begin, think about maybe a place that you have been or that you think about or that you want to go to that just feels like it evokes a sense of calm for you. Um, and then try to pinpoint what about that place makes you feel calm? Is it like the smell of the air when you're at the beach? Is it the colors around you? Is it somebody's specific house that makes you feel really calm? What kinds of things are they doing in that space? Um, and then kind of use that to guide you to make your own room peaceful. Okay. So that kind of wraps up for today um, in calming bedrooms. Next week we are doing um, a session about eco-friendly design. And I'm just really thankful that you all came. I hope you learned a few things. And like I said, this will be on um, YouTube later on. So if you want to reference it or pass it along to anybody else, please do. Thanks, Lydia. Thank you.